We're going to start off with Barb Sweet's interview with Tree Walsh and Noah Davis Power. They're both well known as LGBT activists and despite their difference in age, you'll see in this compelling interview that they face some similar obstacles. Have a look. Hi, I'm Barb Sweet, a senior reporter at The Telegram. Today my two guests will be sharing generational stories of growing up proud in the St. John's area. Uh, with me are Tree Walsh, who with wife Lisa Ziegler were one of two couples at the center of a 2004 ruling on same-sex marriage in the province. As well, I'm joined by Noah Davis Power, 19, a director of the LBGT community at Memorial University. He's also involved in the Make It Better NL campaign, which encourages youth, and is president of St. John's Pride, Inc. Thank you for joining me. Great to be here. Yes, thank you for having us. You're welcome. Uh, Tree, uh, we'll start with you, and would you tell us uh, when you uh, first came out in uh, on the St. John's scene, and uh, a little bit about what it was like? Yeah, it was uh, a little, little different than it was it, it is today. Uh, I came out in 1979, and um, there was nowhere really to go to meet people, and it's really not too different today in terms of uh, identified restaurants or businesses or bars or whatever. Um, so as it stands today, pretty much back then, the bar was where people went to meet and it's still pretty much the same now. Um, but over the years things have changed remarkably. Um, when we do media interviews, I was involved with the Gay Association in Newfoundland and uh, I was the president of the organization. Uh, but when we were invited to do media or, you know, be it print, print was okay, no pictures, no pictures at all, uh, voice recordings, uh, talking about being gay in Newfoundland and Labrador, um, no names, um, and it was just radio. Nobody would do TV. It was impossible to get anybody to come and talk about TV because, well, you don't know, right? We were all out in the community, uh, in the bar, and then our our communities that grew out of that, different groups of people. Um, but nobody really wanted to be public. Uh, Noah, how, what's it like for you now? You're, you're quite, you're uh, involved, you're head of the St. John's Pride Inc. Is it, has it gotten better? Uh, well, definitely comparing it to the uh, previous years where, where Tree was uh, experiencing being out in uh, St. John's. Uh, it's gotten progressively better, but at the same time, uh, LBGT kids, you know, you hear all the time, you hear the suicides, you hear of the bullying. It's still all very rampant, it's still all very real. So even though we've come a long way, I know in your introduction you mentioned trees uh, being involved in the court ruling sanctioning uh, same-sex marriage here, you know, we still have a long way to go. Uh, I was actually outed in 2010, and similar to, you know, Tree over here, it was very scary mm -hmm. to still be in high school and have people know that you were gay. How, how were you at it? Uh, it, was, it was a messy story. Someone got mad at me. They knew I was gay and they spread it all around town where, I'm, where I live. So that was, that was a very uh, rough time mm -hmm. because I wasn't, I certainly wasn't ready to come out. Uh, I was at the time head of the student council at school but uh, still very scary times to be gay in Newfoundland because you really didn't know how far people had progressed and after hearing horror stories from uh, previous generations you still have that worry in the back of your mind mm -hmm. but uh, because and this is what what I've just come to accept is that because I wasn't uh, what people have you know, ingrained in their mind as being stereotypically gay, mm -hmm. I wasn't targeted. And the next year I was elected the president of the student council. And it just demonstrates how things evolve. Society is changing, but we still had to go to court yeah. to fight for the right to get married, which is, I don't know, so stunned, but hey. And that is changing. You can see it changing around the world. Uh, so, Tree, 
When you were 25 and you're out in St. John's, can you describe to me what it was like? Were there is was there places to go uh, in terms of uh, uh, restaurants, bars? What'd you do? Well, I was lucky that a guy who worked with me was gay. So I had no idea. I thought I was the only lesbian in Newfoundland. Um, and I, but I knew, you know, like, he was out to me, and I'd go to parties at his house with my ex-husband, because we were the cool, straight couple. Um, and so I said to him, you know, I, I'd like to meet some people. And he said, oh, well, you know, me and my boyfriend will take you out. So I found out there was a bar called Friends uh, downtown, where Velvet is now, the current uh, bar. Uh, but it was... Uh, not as nice. <laughs> it was pretty uh, dingy, dark. Uh, it had the best music, and and uh, it was a lot of gay people would go there earlier in the night. Now downtown St. John's early yeah. is like twelve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then once all the other bears open, all the street people would come and watch us. Did you feel? Really gross. Did you did you feel comfortable going in and out of the bar? Yeah, I did, um, but it wasn't so hot when the cops would raid, because the cops would raid the bar regularly just to harass us. They'd say it was overcrowded, turn on our lights, count us, you know, stuff like that, harass us, and then leave because they weren't overcrowded, and you know, we really got hassled that way. Um, and there was nowhere else, so if you wanted to meet people, you went to the bar, and so we need more social. Uh, things organized and pride and other organizations do things like that to help and uh, you know alleviate the isolation that we often feel. Yeah definitely uh, pride obviously in Newfoundland is a lot smaller than it is in Toronto in Montreal and any major centers and you know even in smaller ones Halifax but uh, during Pride Week you see so many people that you know but you're also going to see the flocks upon flocks of people from all age ranges that are going to go, come out to the events because they know that at these events they feel safe because they're with their brothers and sisters in the community. But it's, it seems like a huge community then, but it's but day to day, week to week, people who are in the community uh, don't see that because we don't have uh, a lot of places to gather. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but it's it's bigger than it appears to be. Mm -hmm. uh, even though uh, we see people flock at Pride, they're not going to necessarily feel as safe going to other functions throughout the rest of the year. They see that Pride is going to be in the spotlight. They see that lots of people are going to be there. You know, there's just because of the amount of people, there's less chance of being being harassed verbally, physically. Mm -hmm. So we can look at that and say, if people are going to come out only to LBGT specific events with their partner or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, that speaks volumes to how people still feel today in society about it, where they still feel that they can't go out on a regular day outside of Pride Week. All right, well, we've had a fascinating conversation and we're going to continue it next week. So I thank you, Tree and uh, Noah, for joining me and stay tuned next week for our continuation.